I'm streaming whoever's at the door. Am I live? I hit live as soon as somebody rang the doorbell. Let them know. I think I'm live. Can y'all see me? I don't know if anybody can see me. This stream is in the yellow. Can you guys see me? Okay, I think I'm live. Okay, here I go. Here I go. <laughs> Why do my streams just always start with confusion? I swear. I just want to hit live and know I'm live. It's always me looking around and am I live? Can y'all hear me and see me? Good God. How's everybody doing? All right. So it's a lot. It's a lot going on right now on social media. Shout out to all the new members joining. First super chat. Anissa Zamat says, just wanted to say hello and show support. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, let me keep it real. My head is killing me right now. And um, I was going to go live yesterday, but I was like coughing really bad. My asthma is like all the way on 10. So I keep coughing. So the people keep asking me, they're like, oh, you know, you need to go get tested. I was tested not even two weeks ago. I don't have the coronavirus. I did a whole stream on it. So, you know, thank you for your worry, but I'm in the clear. Maybe you need to go get tested. Make sure you don't have it. Okay? Because, you know, per the media, you know, it's spreading. 10,000 people a day are catching this shit. You know, I'm so over the media, you guys. So before I get started, I just want to address a, a few serious things really quick before we get into the topic. Um, let's see here. We got a bunch of people here. So we got over 3,800 people in here watching. Shout out to y'all. Thank you guys for coming through to this, to support. Um, where are all my moderators? I want to make sure we have the moderators in the house. Cause there's going to be a few things we need to address here. Looks like we got a few mods and let me see if I need to, okay. I see, I see, uh, Maya, Maya. Okay, Travis Timmons. Okay, cool. I'm seeing my mods. Okay, perfect. So th this is, I want to, I have to talk about this, okay? Um, because I'm really tired of people coming to my stream and then taking bits and pieces of clips or just making shit up and trying to have me and other black content creators beefing. So I need to dead this right here. So if you guys remember over the weekend, I did a stream and, I, and, and ironically enough, this stream was about comprehension, listening and context. Okay. So this person was in my stream. Somebody sent, I believe a $5 super chat. Cause I was talking about the whole toy uh, salute situation. So somebody sent a super chat and they said, um, another black content creator, Paris Milan had did a video on it. Had I watched it? And I said, no, I haven't seen it yet. That was it. Do you know that somebody went to her? Um, cause I guess she does like a question and answer thing on her Instagram and somebody went to her and said that lovely T on her live stream said that you were anti-black. It's nobody. Nobody, nobody at all. Lovely T said you're anti-black. Like, what is wrong with some of y'all? So let me go ahead and pull up the receipts here because I, I'm really tired of just people trying to start shit between black women on this platform. It's getting old and it's getting tiring. So let me, this is the liar right here. This person, they jumped in her DM and they basically said, did you see Lovely T said you're anti-black? And, you know, Paris was like, wait, what? Why would she say that? You know, we've never had no issues. That doesn't even sound like Lovely T. But shout out to one of my tea sippers, okay? Who was a, a straight up mature woman. She ended up DMing. Uh, she wrote a comment, matter of fact. That's the wrong screenshot. She wrote a comment. And she said, shake my head, T. People are messy on Paris's DMs. Saying that you caught her anti-black. Now she's asking her survivors, uh, what's up? I watch all your videos and Paris's videos as well. And I know you never said anything of the sort. I just wanted to let you know before, you know, people try and bring you, you know, bring mess to you. And so she also DM Paris and let her know. So I reached out to Paris because I'm like, I had no idea this was even going on. 
And we had a DM conversation, and I reassured her I have no issues with her. Never have. And I've even come onto her video where she talked about the uh, Miss Jessie sisters, the ones who made the curly hair pudding, TT Branch, where I, you know, I complimented her on a job well done, good research. So this is what people try to do. So, um, and I told her I would, I would definitely clear that up. And this is what she was even telling that person. So, you know, kudos to Paris for not even feeding into it. But this is what people do. So to my moderators, what I want you guys to do, anybody bringing up any other YouTuber's names that's not the topic at hand, boot them out. Boot them out. I don't want to see no side conversations, none of that. Because you know who did say it? Because it wasn't me who said it. And this is not to, you know, blast the person. I mean, everybody don't have to like everybody. But this is the person who said it. They said, we do not remember Paris, Mil um, Paris Milan was an anti-black woman six years ago. This is who said it. So they basically read somebody's chat, a side conversation in my chat room, and then went to Paris to lie and say that I said that during my stream. So you, the person who went to Paris Milan, you're miserable, you're messy, and you're anti-black because you literally lied on me to try and start beef with me and another black woman. So moderators, let's make this clear. I don't want to see no side conversations in my chat about any other black content creators, good or bad. If the conversation is not about what it's titled, and the title right now is Trisha and Tati, Jaden, I mean, excuse me, Jada Pinkett, Will Smith, and August Alsina, anybody mentioning other black content creators in my chat, get them out of here. Because this is what they're doing. They're literally taking chat conversations and then running to other content creators saying, lovely T dissed you, lovely T's dragging you. L like what is wrong with people? Like it's, it's just too much. I don't, I don't do beef, I don't come on YouTube to have drama with nobody. But people love to just create stuff. And it's insane, I, don't have, I honestly don't have no issues with anybody on this platform. Even the people who don't drug me, I don't care. I don't hold grudges like that. I move on. We had our issues. I've moved on. I don't hold. I, I just don't hold on to baggage like that, especially not with Internet shit. I don't know most of these people. So there's nothing for me to be sitting here, you know, holding on and being mad months later. Just stop it. Stop running back to other content creators trying to kick up shit. That's all y'all do on here. And I understand a lot of our subscribers intermix and, and mesh and stuff like that. But y'all do it to everyone. Y'all will be in this person's stream, acting like you rock with them. Then y'all go to the next stream and then kick up dust. It's like high school. So from now on, I don't want to see no other YouTubers' names in my chat, period. Because for that person to sit there and lie and try and kick up dust, what if me and Paris were not mature enough as women to put our egos aside? What if I thought I was so up here like, I don't care what she thinks. I didn't say it. No, I reached out to her and said, I don't know what's going on, but you're going to hear from the horse's mouth. I have no issue with you, and I never said anything disparaging about you. And as soon as I told her that, she's like, I already knew it. It just seemed like it was a bunch of mess, and we talked about everything. Everything's in the clear. But for people to try and do that is just really sad. And you should be ashamed of yourself. You're a grown woman going from chat to chat trying to start mess between black content creators. And then y'all cry about black people not getting along and not collaborating. That's why, because y'all create unnecessary beef. So I'm saying it here. I don't have an issue with any black content creator on this platform. Do I watch everybody? No. But I don't have it. Now, if they have an issue with me, that's their issue, not mine. But I don't have any particular issue with anybody. So just keep my name out of the bullshit. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to get that off because I, I, that was, I was just really shocked when that was sent to me yesterday. Like, what in the world? Like, how do you do that? And the whole stream is about comprehension, listening, and context. What part of listening, context, and comprehension is that? You failed. You failed the entire stream. So, yes, the, dev, the devil's always busy. So, yes, moderators, keep an eye out. Any side conversations about other YouTubers, get them out of here. 
We're not doing that. People are not going to come to my platform because they know the chat be popping. There'd be a lot of people in here and use my platform to disparage and attack other YouTubers. We're not going to do that. If you have an issue with, with any YouTuber, you go to their stream and you tell them to their face. Don't come in my stream trying to kick up dust. Okay, so let me let me get back here. Um, Kirk Tareen uh, says, hey, auntie, my mother and I watch you all the time. Um, keep waking up the masses. By the way, please accept my request on IG. I have something to run by you that can't be said on here. Stay strong, queen. Thank you so much for the $100 super chat. I really appreciate it. I will eventually make my page public. Um, let me know what your name is. Send me an email. So that way I know what your name is and I can just go in and approve you directly. Right now, I don't want to make my page public. I just, I have like 2,000 requests. I don't want anybody new on my page. So if you send me your information in the email, I'll just go in and look for you and I'll approve you that way. So, but thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the support as well. Um, let's see here. Portia Burnett says, hey T, love listening to you from Roach, Minnesota. <laughs> Are you saying Rochester? Maybe it is Roach, Minnesota. I haven't heard of Roach, Minnesota, but thank you so much for the support. I truly appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Disney Nia says, hey, T, been watching you since I was 12. I'm 22 now. Back when YouTube had DMs, you responded to my message, and I've been a fan ever since. Sending love from Cali. My name is Nia. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it, and you are definitely an OGT sipper. So thank you. So, let's go ahead and get started here, you guys. Um, we got almost 10,000 people in here already. So, let me go ahead. I want to get to the topic. So, if you guys do not know, after the whole Tati Westbrook situation, Trish Paytas, who is very good friends with Shane Dawson, okay? And she basically said that Shane Dawson is like a brother to her and she cannot turn her back on Shane. Which is understandable. She has every right to defend her so-called brother of YouTube. That's her business. But when I tell you, I was surprised by how hard she drugged Tati Westbrook and actually sounded intelligent about it and actually made a lot of really good points. So I did agree with, with a lot of what Tish um, was trying to say. But there was a few things that did bother me with what she was saying. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys her clips really quick here on my Instagram. Give me just a moment. To pull it up here. So I want you guys to listen to this really quick. Let me pop out my chat. Okay. That video, Tati. You accuse James Charles of being a sexual predator of sexual crimes. You should be investigated for making false criminal claims. You can't backtrack. You can't say someone else told me to do it. That came out of your mouth. That was your first started video. Yeah, maybe, if, I don't know, I don't know, I wasn't about, but if someone's like pushing you to do a video or pushing you that way, you're a grown ass woman. You're probably damn near 40. You can make a decision yourself. And why now are you deciding to speak up? Because it's, it's cool to hate Shane and Jeffrey? Is that why you're deciding to speak up? Why didn't you speak up about it in December? Why didn't you speak at all during Black Lives Matters? All your comments in your video are, hey, let's get justice for Breonna Taylor. And yet you didn't mention one thing. Were you scared to mention George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Black Lives Matter in June because of this scandal? It's bullshit. Like it's such bullshit right up the bat. And again, I'm not I'm not defending Shane in this. I don't know what's happening. I'm sure it's not ain't defending Jeffrey. But think of the grand scheme of things here. We are in the midst of a pandemic, of a racial movement, and this girl is concerned about letting people know that she was she was kind of pushed into doing a video about James Charles. Bitch, you were salty as fuck that he promoted a different hair company, hair vitamin. Oh, you know what the fuck? You were you were bitter. That video, Tati. You accused James Charles of being a sexual. We're bitter. Like, just say that, and you threw in the sexual assault. You went above and beyond and be like, hey, I heard you were a sexual predator trying to get, like, you said this up. Saying how he was trying to get straight guys and trick them or whatever the fuck you said. This is crazy. This is, like, this is so, so crazy to see this. I think, yeah, you know what? I think a lot of people should be found on all this shit. And guess what? Shane's YouTube has been demonetized. Shane's not going to be posting on social media. His, his you know, he's taken, he's taken the, the punishment of whatever crimes, which aren't even criminal, of this really poor, disgusting, tasteless of comments and jokes that he's taking, taking responsibility for. We haven't heard shit from Jeffrey. But now we're hearing from this girl that she's scared and in the midst of all this crazy shit in the world, she's bringing it back to fucking last year and being like, actually, I was, t I was like kind of manipulated into doing this video, bitch. What you did is a crime. You falsely accused someone else of sexual assault. You should be investigated. Apology to James is that she allowed. Okay. So 
honey, Tish was not here for the foolishness. She was going in. And I believe the person sped it up because maybe Tish is, maybe Tish, you know, copyrights people or something. I don't know. So it's a little bit more sped up than how she naturally talks. But Trish usually talks fast anyways. Now, let me say this. While I agree with a lot of what Trish is trying to say, and she made a lot of valid points, and she probably sipped some tea because this was after my live stream. So let's keep it real, honey. She did hit up a lot of the same points I said first. But I still got to keep it real. Trish is also problematic. So it's almost like right message, shady, wrong messenger, okay? Because she's worn blackface. She said that, uh, what did she say? Because she had oily eyelids, that that means she has black ancestry. Trish has done a lot of just, you know, really weird shit on YouTube. From claiming she was black to claiming she was a chicken nugget to coming out as trans because she likes to wear boys clothing and cut her hair short. Just all types of BS, okay? So Trish has definitely been been problematic. So for her to turn her back on her so-called brother, that would have been, you know, really, that would have been a shocker and a slap in the face. Like, you got the nerve to turn your back on him, all the shit you done did. So of course she's going to have Shane's back, okay? But my thing is this, okay? Miss Problematic Chicken Nugget. I didn't like the fact that she kept mentioning Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. And this is why I didn't like that. I felt like it was very Joe Scarsborough-ish, okay? And let me kind of explain. It's almost like she's low-key. Of course, she's trying to defend her friend. But she's doing it in the guise of acting like she's standing up or standing, you know, with Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. Now, let me keep it real. I don't watch Trish like that. Before this situation, has she spoken up for Black Lives Matter? Has she been hashtagging, you know, Black Lives Matter? Has she been talking about Breonna Floyd and wanting the, you know, her killers brought to justice? Let me read the comments because, like I said, maybe she has. I don't know. Yes or no? She did? She never has? Nope. Nope. Okay, so most people are saying that she hasn't said anything before this. So I find that very, very calculated. That basically what she's trying to do, she's trying to play chicken nugget mind games, okay? But I'm a quick one. You can't run shit past me, Miss Chicken Nugget. What she's trying to do is make it about, well, there's bigger issues in the world. There's bigger fish to fry. Fuck this whole vitamin situation with Tati, James, and Jeffrey, let's minimize that because right now the world is going through chaos and drama and the world is on fire and there's rioting and looting. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's uh, COVID-19. There's so many more serious topics in the world than you talking about your situation a year later. That's all she's doing. She's basically trying to minimize Tati and James and Shane's situation by bringing up real world issues. It's, it's basically a mental mind game. Okay. Um, let me just. There was another part where she said something. Let me see if I, I thought I. Okay. It was a. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is this other part. Let me just show y'all this real quick. Like is this all people have is fucking YouTube? Shit. She starts crying over, over her beauty brand taking a toll. But as I once mentioned, the state of the world. Where is the prayers for our state of the world right now, Tati? Where's your off? Like you prayed on this for a year, but you couldn't pray for Black Lives Matter for any of this shit happening. Corona, people fucking die. Like there are people literally dying, Tati. And you're going to cry because it's affecting your beauty brand? Holy shit. She was excited to... Like, oh my God. Like, oh my God. Like, Trash, have you prayed for the state of the world? Have you prayed for Black Lives Matter, bitch? Have you prayed for Breonna Taylor and George Floyd? I'm just saying. Don't just call out Tati, bitch. Did you... I mean, I'm, I'm asking a serious question. Have you sent prayers? Have you sent public, you know, condolences and, 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 and anything like that? 
You know, that that's all it is. She's just trying to deflect and minimize this situation because her best friend slash you know you two brothers involved. Let's keep it real, okay? This is this is nothing more. And like I said, I'm not gonna throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. She did hit on some real points, and she made a lot of sense. My only issue is her dragging Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Elijah McCain. I mean, she named every black person, you know what I'm saying, that's been trending. I've never heard her mention people like this before. They're not the first black people to be killed by the police. I'm just saying. So it's very convenient now that she literally mentioned their name about 10 times in this, throughout the video. She mentioned something with Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, several times in the video. To the point where it was like, okay, I see what you're doing now. You're gaslighting. Slow down, sis. Keep to the topic at hand, which is the vitamins. Don't go dragging in all these dead black folks. They have nothing to do with y'all's fuckery. Okay? So I didn't like that. Um, somebody says she has been vocal. Maybe she has. Like I said, I don't watch her. The majority of the people said no. So I'm going out for the comments. I don't follow her. I don't know what she does. I don't know. I don't, I don't follow walking chicken nuggets. But anyways, um, I want to show y'all this. This is what that. This is what this reminded me of. If you guys remember a few months ago, I did a video called "Several Celebrities and Journalists Jump to Defend Gail King," and in that video. Remember, I brought up the fact how Joe Scarsborough, who usually doesn't have anything to say, you know, on behalf of the black community, but was all of a sudden was so gung-ho, him and his little, you know, partner up there were so gung-ho to take up for a black woman. And he kept saying, Snoop Dogg threatened a black woman, a black woman. It's like he kept trying to reiterate that she was black. And it's like, bruh, we know what color Gail is. You're doing a bit much. So watch this quick interview Watch how the woman interjects about Snoop Dogg's rec record because they're trying to add extra sauce onto it to get him canceled off of the Martha Stewart show. Gaslighting at its, at its finest. It is very simple. A black female journalist asked a tough question in the middle of a wide-ranging interview. And because of that, her life was threatened. Quote, we're coming to get you from a man, it must be remembered, who was arrested for murder. Arrested we're, 11 times. Uh, we're coming to get you. And the New York Times doesn't write an editorial about this. The Post doesn't write an editorial about this. The Wall Street Journal doesn't write an editorial about this. Nobody talks about this. I will say one person who did, Susan Rice. Oh, she, she said, yeah. I okay, so y'all just heard that. So do you see? That's basically the same thing Trish tried to do. Same playbook. And you see how she tried to champ, uh, <coughs> how she chimed in like, oh, um, what he said? He said he, he was arrested for murder. And then she made sure to talk about his criminal record and everything else. Same gaslighting tactics. And this is a no defense of Snoop. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the point. If you're not going to defend black women any other time, don't try and play superhero now when it comes to your, you know, co-worker in the journalism world. Missing with the BS. Okay? So let me go. So I just, you know, like I said, Trish... I will give her some props. She did make a lot of good points, but I just wasn't feeling how she just kept mentioning the whole Black Lives Matter situation. I wasn't feeling that part of it. So let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Give me just a second. Oh, that's his wife? Oh, I don't know who she is. I mean, I've seen her before. I don't know her name. Um, Deidre Robbins says, love you, T. I'll catch the live later. I have to go to work. Thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate it. And thank you for the super chat. Um, let me see here. April Moon 676 says, hey, T. I've been watching you for five years. I love your channel and your videos. You have an open mind and make me think. Keep doing you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, Alex Nicole Morgan says, hey, T. I've been watching you since you did the commentary. On that horrible ass Aaliyah movie. Much love to you from Texas. Thank you. Thank you for coming through today. I appreciate it. So I want to go ahead. Um, let's see here. I've been on for 20 minutes. We got 11,000 people in here.
please make sure you guys hit that like button. Please support this stream. Let's bring more people in here in case people are bored or not doing anything. Um, so let's talk about the whole August Alcina Jada Pinkett situation, okay? This entire situation is a mess. So let me pull this up really quick here. Give me just a second. So the other day, August Alcina did an interview with Angela Yee. Okay, and I'm a, and if y'all know me, y'all know I'm a big August Alcina fan. My young tea sippers back in 2014 put me on to him. Cause when he first came, when he first became viral, it was him going off on like 106 and Park on the host about them asking him a question. And a lot of people thought he was just mean and arrogant. And I kind of drug him. And I remember this 14 year old girl sent me an email. And she said, Miss T, you know, please don't drag him. He's, uh, he's misunderstood. You know, please go listen to his music because his new album was getting ready to drop. So she told me what the name of his album was. I listened to his first album. And then the new one dropped with Benediction, which is one of my favorite August Alcina songs. That song has brought me through a lot, especially when I was going through so much back then in 2014. That was around the time when I moved to L.A. and everything else. So I'm a big fan of August, and I've always kept up with him. He's been through a lot. Yeah, I remember for a while I was using that whole, you know, must be nice. When he was a little 11-year-old boy, I was using that clip as a meme. Okay, so August has been through a lot. So he sat down with Angela Yee, and I watched the whole interview, and he was talking about his new album. But the part, of course, that goes viral is the salacious part concerning Jada Pinkett Smith, where he talked about basically they had a relationship. And I spoke about this over a year ago. But I want you guys to listen to a snippet of this interview. I want y'all to go check this out. Look at everybody talking about August is their baby daddy. Uh-uh. Please. Y'all don't know what to do with all that. Let me stop. <laughs> Cause I've been having a ball, honey, posting that that uh boxer pick. Mm. I actually sat down with Will and had a conversation due to the transformation from their marriage to life partnership that they've spoken to several times and it you know, not involving romanticism. Mm -hmm. He gave me his blessing. And I, I totally gave myself to that relationship for years of my life, you know. And I truly and really, really deeply loved and have a ton of love for her. Um, I, I devoted myself to it. I gave my full self to it. So much so to the point that I can die right now and be okay with knowing that I truly gave myself to somebody. Right, you did the right thing. And I really loved a person. I experienced that. I know what that, that feels like. I actually sat down. <laughs> so, of course, social media went crazy. You know what I mean? This picture is just so funny because you see Queen Latifah in the background. And then there was a picture of Jada Pinkett basically um, interviewing her damn self, okay? So now, like I told you guys, let me go ahead and come back on here real quick. Um, I've been speaking on this for a while, on the whole Jada Pinkett, August Alcina situation. And I made a video a year ago addressing this and addressing, you know, my feelings on their relationship. So I'm, and I have some timestamps. I want to play you guys this. Just some of the stuff I said a year ago concerning everything. So let me pull up these timestamps. Because Jada thinks she's slick. Well, no, actually, before I play that, no, I'll play it. I'm going to play that first. Give me just a second here. Let's see, 113. Okay, I want y'all to go ahead and listen to this real quick. released his kiss forever in a day ep and so he released a new song and the song is basically a twist on kehlani's nanya and in this song august is talking about a past lover who didn't know what she had until he was gone putting on a show because you don't want the world to know that you lost a man who loved you all along he is going in but within the song he decided to put the visuals on instagram 
And when you watch it, it's like a DM conversation of August and somebody else. And the name in the DM is Corinne, which is Jada's real middle name. And you see them having this back and forth conversation. He's in love with her. And then he also ends up posting a GIF um, near the end of the song of Jada. So a lot of people said that this song is about Jada. He's basically putting out their affair and everything else. Now, one of the things that made me really speculate that their relationship was not platonic at all, if you guys remember just a year ago, back in September 2018, August made the blogs for basically sending this super sentimental uh, sweet birthday message to Jada. And the way people took it, like, this is a bit much for two people who are friends, who are in a mentor-mentee relationship, especially when Jada's a married woman and everybody knows that she's married to Will Smith. So this is what August Alcina penned to Jada Pinkett for her 47th birthday last year. I don't believe in luck. I believe in God's divine order. You are an example of God's divinity in its covering over my life. A beautifully complex individual you are. I could spend a lifetime decoding you. Thank you for your laughter. Thank you for seeing my heart and character and, and not measuring me based upon where I come from. You see me for who I am, what I'm going to be, even when I can't see me. Thank you for challenging me on a daily basis. You are a piece of heaven here on earth, the fortune in my cookie, the vet to my rookie. You are love personified. There hasn't been enough diction created to articulate or express the capacity of my love for you. It is simply beyond measure and human comprehension. So as my soul continues this quest, I'd like to say happy birthday best at Jada Pinkett Smith. You are nothing like the rest. Honey. All right, y'all heard that. Um, usually I just get happy birthday, T. Enjoy your birthday, T. I said, well, damn, that's, <laughs> that's a deep letter. That means you can't tell me. <laughs> That there's not some type of real connection there. So I really think what happened is that August was really in love with Jada. Okay? And what people don't realize is that an emotional connection with somebody is way more powerful than even a physical, sexual connection. Those words that he was writing, like I said in that video later on, reminded me of the same letter that Tupac wrote to Jada. Okay? Okay? And let me go ahead and read this super chat, honey. Daniel Jade sent $200. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She says, just wanted to say I appreciate you for all that you do. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for the support. Um, let's see here. Live from NYC says, August Alcina is a simp. He knew what it was but fell in love, not telling a business like a sucker. He's no victim. Mmm. And I see a lot of guys coming at him like that, but I believe this, okay? I believe what happened, because what, what people don't realize is that Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, Will Smith, they really have not been happy for a long time, okay? I think initially, <clears throat> Jada reached out to August to help him out, because he was going through a lot. He had lost his sight for a while. Let's not forget, his brother was killed. He has custody of all three of his nieces, his brother's children. Then recently, his sister died. And he also has custody of those nieces and nephews. This young man don't have no biological kids himself. But he's still a parent to his nieces and nephews that he takes care of. So, I believe with everything that he was going through, Jada initially went to be a mentor, went to help him out. And I believe that they ended up having a closer connection than either one of them realized initially. Because I'm sure August probably had a crush on her. Plus, she's older. She's coming with all that mush mouth, you know, woke wisdom. And then, you know, she's at home bored because, for y'all who don't know, Will Smith got a whole girlfriend, okay? But they want to keep up this whole facade for, I guess, Hollywood that they're like this happily married couple when they're not. Like every other episode on Red Table Talk, she looks like she's about to burst into tears. He looks like he don't want to be there. And they're always talking about the failure or, or, you know, the stress of their relationship. Recently, they did a whole damn show talking about how they're, they're just now getting to know each other because of Corona. What? Y'all been together for 21 years. It shouldn't take the, the, the virus to make y'all realize like, okay, well, damn, I'm learning more about this person. So to me... 
you know, she used August as much as August used her. You know what I'm saying? And if anything, she she had to have kicked it off. You know what I mean? Because she's the older one in the relationship. And he was looking to her as a mentor. I mean, yeah, as a mentor. And let's also not forget this, okay? I, I have to go there. I have to go there. First of all, do y'all see that? This is a picture that went viral of August Alcina a few years ago. Okay? They said that boy is packing so hard, he was sued for rupturing a woman's cervix. <laughs> They said the woman's cervix was ruptured, okay? And then you notice, once they got around each other and they were cool, all these pictures. This is like shit that couples do. With a flower on the head, his arm on, you know, her shoulder, her making goofy faces, him with the kids. She was living her best life. Around the time of August. But now Will Smith wants to come out and says that he denies giving August Alcina his blessing. Then Jada came out and also she had denied it as well. But this, this picture tells a lot. You see how she looks here with Will? She looks bored, tired of that old thing. But look how she looks here with August. And look at August's hand. A picture is worth a thousand words. Look at August Alcina's hand. Around her waist. Look at her smile. She looks young. She feels sexy. Look at her dress here. Here she looks like an old school marm. <laughs> like somebody's damn grandma. But here she looks all fierce and sexy. Got them little bitty titties hanging out and shit. Go ahead, Jada. She said she was getting some of that young peen. That boy is hung like a damn horse. Okay? Look at that. Look at this smile. Versus this smile. Miss me with the bullshit. Okay? She seen this viral picture and was like, I'm going to find out if this is real. Okay? <laughs> Shout out to everybody who popped up on my Instagram when I posted that picture. Folks was like, who the hell am I following? Who's this dude? You know what I mean? They thought they had followed Pornhub or something, but it was just me. I have to remind people of that picture, okay? So, let me click on something else because that picture is distracting me right now. Let me click on something else on my Instagram. I don't need to say that. But like I was saying, I felt like for Jada, it was probably just sex. That thing was big. It was legal. It was right for the taking, okay? So for her, she just wanted to just bounce up and down on some shit. But for August, he really made a soul tie connection with her. Remember I told y'all, when you have sex with people, you know, it's very hard to just disconnect. People create soul ties. So with Jada, she might have been mature enough to be like, you know what? I'm not necessarily creating a soul tie with him. For her, it's just sex. You know, she's getting her groove back because she knows Will Smith is out here doing him. But for August, he got involved very, very emotionally. For August, it was deeper than sex. And I believe that's why he's always been trying to just send out hits. Remember, a few years ago, he had posted this being messy and people drug him. Let me go back here and pull this picture up. Y'all remember when he posted this? His lip was swollen, face was swollen, he looked like he had a black eye. And he says, Will finally caught up to me about the Jada crap that was going on in the news. Let's just say he whooped my ass. Guess that's all the training. Oh, guess all that Ali training really paid off. Why would he write something like that being messy? So that was the first time. And I believe when he did that, he did it because, you know, he was upset with Jada, upset, like, you know, trying to get Jada's attention, okay? And then that didn't work. So then, like, a year later, he ended up coming out with that song, okay? 
So now what's crazy about it is that Jada and I posted this this morning. She says, there's some healing that needs to happen, so I'm bringing myself to the table. And then somebody made this meme. Why July on August? We want to know. Because we believe August. And, you know, th there goes that same picture again just for y'all's gratification. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Now, I see somebody post. So, look, Carla Sealy said, I'm crying. T, you always keeping it real. You already know, honey. We know what it is. We know what it is. Y'all can say what y'all want to say about August saying he's snitching and everything else. August, she, that old lady put it on him. And she had his nose wide open. Okay? He didn't realize he wasn't nothing but a splack of belly to her. Put a teacup if y'all know what a splack of belly is. I know all the older folks do. That's some 90s shit. Uh, shout out to Kiki West 2001. She says, I heard she had vaginal rejuvenation surgery. That's probably the reason why. Yeah, I remember her bragging about that shit. She was trying to get that coochie reworked. So... That's what it was. For her, it was just, you know, a hookup. For him, he caught feelings. But now she can't ignore it anymore because he done put out that documentary. He got songs out. He's spilling the tea to Angela Yee. You know, her and Will can try and deny it. But really, she put herself in a situation where this little young boy done got his emotions caught into everything. And now he's spilling the tea. So now what she's going to try and do is clean it up. Okay. So I, I really want to see this red table talk, but I really want to see August on there and Will. Okay, I would be here for that. But to me, this is why I feel like it's true. Because I just don't feel like Jada and Will have been happy for a long time in that marriage. And that's okay. People go through things in their marriage all the time. But I think they need to be honest with themselves and stop the facade. Because the facade is getting old. Nobody's buying it. I want to play y'all this video clip here real quick. Let me see. We don't need to play that one. Okay, this is the one. I was devastated even worse than a divorce. We, we broke up mm -hmm. within our marriage and got back together again. Right. Yeah, I had to rebuild. I had to rebuild different. with new rules yeah, and... Something way different. Something way completely different. The couple was never headed for divorce, though. They just took their relationship down to the foundation and rebuilt. We don't even call ourselves married, married anymore. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a life partnership yeah. in the sense that we've created a foundation together mm -hmm. that we know is for this lifetime. For this lifetime. We you have know? devoted ourselves to each other. Okay, miss me with the mush mouth bullshit, okay? So, but remember, people forget about these interviews. I don't forget nothing. So while everybody's talking about August is lying, they just told you about their life partnership. So remember, this is what um, uh, August also told Angela Yee. Hold up. Let me go back and play it. Excuse me. That he got permission from Will. I actually sat down with Will and had a conversation due to the transformation from their marriage to life partnership that they've spoken on several times. Mm. Mm. So yes, August is not crazy. I don't think he's lying about any of this stuff. Will and Jade are just trying to, you know, are just trying to protect their image. And what happened is when he started dropping hints and music and posting that goofy Instagram time, I will beat him up. They started blackballing him in the industry because if you watch the full interview, he talks about how he was losing money and how people were distancing themselves away from him and basically calling him a liar. And all this stemmed behind Jada Pinkett Smith. They allowed this young boy to be the fall guy so they could keep up their perfect facade. And that's wrong. You know, that's wrong. Just say what it is. I mean, it's not really our business, you know, if they're smashing but being that he put it out there, we all going to talk about it. That's what she does on her damn red table talk. She sits around and damn gossips. So we gossiping out about her shit right now, okay? So that's my thing. Everybody's so quick to, you know, dismiss August. But I remember that shit too, August. You ain't telling me nothing that I don't remember. You know, so to me, August is not lying about this situation. They're just trying to clean up everything, you know. And, and it's quiet as it's kept. 
because a lot of people want to act like they're the perfect couple and if they want to stay together for whatever reason or they don't want to feel like going through a divorce because a divorce is worse, that's fine. That is their relationship. I like Will Smith and Jada Pinkett together. I knew that for... for I mean, it just wouldn't make sense for Jada to leave Will for August Alcina. That was never going to happen. But who knows what she was saying to him while pillow talking with him. You know, who knows why she was bouncing and shit. I believe Will. I believe Will. You know, you just never know what she was saying when she was bouncing on that eggplant. So he's thinking, you know what I'm saying? There might be a chance for him to slide up in there and, you know, be her number one. But he found out that, no, she's not leaving Will. <laughs> she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but I believe she was pillow talking. And saying some shit to him in the bedroom that had his head gone. And then once he realized, like, damn, she's not going to leave Will. But every time I put it on her, she'd be like, I'm going to leave Will. I'm going to leave Will. <laughs> and then she doesn't leave Will. And then he gets back in his feelings, okay? But August ain't lying, honey. August got sprung off that rejuvenated cooch. Let's keep that shit real, okay? So now... Oh, man, we got a lot of super chats, and I'm sorry if I'm not reading them. I apologize. Let me grab a few here. <coughs> Ari Wood says, Jada might have been hinting at something with her role on Girls Trip. August probably needs about three damn grapefruits. Love you, T. Thank you so much. Thank you. A lot of people have been saying that, too, about her role on Girls Trip. Um, Nikki Proctor Weldon says, Jada actually had three vaginal rejuvenation surgeries. During that period, she was a oh, <laughs> during the period she was allegedly allegedly with August. She said it felt like a sixteen year old yoni. So that's why she had that rejuvenation. That damn eggplant stretched that shit out from here to kingdom come. She had not one but three. Oh, August was putting in work. That's probably the best pain she's ever had, and he's fine too. Don't forget that August is very handsome. I didn't know she had three. Mm. Oh, we. Dave Hart says, just seen a guy in a dress trying to play. Man, get the hell out of here. Um, K. Bob says, I still think Shane Dawson caught up the Kardashians to get the story out. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, that good juju. Y'all finally made it to a live. That's what's up. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for the super chat. Um, look. Rice Lizzie says, I understand what Will and Jada are trying to do, but I'm not about the facade. It's about being a family no matter what. And August wasn't trying to be a husband and brother. Exactly. August wanted more. Obviously, Jada and Jada's not going. And Will Smith is not going to allow her to, you know what I'm saying, to go either. They, they're both in it for different reasons. But now what's so funny is this. Um, Angel3287 says, you always got the tea. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so what's so funny is this. Now, messy Tisha Campbell's at honey, nobody, nobody at all. Here comes Tisha Campbell <laughs> being messy. Now, who here is from L.A.? OK, I'm going to read the, the, the Tisha Campbell tea first and then we're going to have an L.A. discussion. OK, because I know everybody from L.A. knows the tea about the Campbells and the Smiths. OK. So this is what Tisha Campbell said, honey, with her little messy ass. And pull this up. Y'all having fun? Alaska loves me. Thank you, Alaska. Okay, so hold on. Let me move this over. So everybody's been going at Tisha for being messy. So Tisha basically wrote this on Instagram. She said the truth always comes out in the end, no matter how hard anyone tries to hide it. Lies are just temporarily delay. Lies are just a temporary delay to the inevitable. Then she says, don't have to say a word. God reveals all. <laughs> Can't put a spin on that. Then she goes on to say this in her comment section. She says, um... At Super Me Frank, and you're right. They will, capital W-I-L-L, -L, lie till the end. 
The real key key is people, capital will, W-I-L-L, stop believing them. So once again, being messy as hell, right? So then what ended up happening is people started calling her out like, okay, you might want to sit this one out. You messy. We all know the rumor between your husband and Will. So stop. So she got drugged. So who hears from L.A. and has heard the Will Smith, Dwayne Martin tea? And we're just going to leave it at that. It's just alleged tea, but it's L.A. tea. We're, put a teacup of you from L.A. and you heard that damn tea before. I see a few. Is the stream messing up? If the stream is messing up, I'm going to keep going. I, um, I'm recording this, so it'll be uploaded. So don't worry. Okay, somebody said, I'm not from LA, LA, but I heard that tea. Okay, so we got a lot of teacups. We got quite a few people in here from LA. Okay, cool. We're not going to start no rumors, but there's just been alleged tea for a while about them, okay? So people started dragging Tish, uh, Trish, what's her name? Tisha. I'm about to call her Trisha Paytas. They started dragging Tisha Campbell like you're being messy. You need to sit your ass down. So then she comes back, and this is what she says. So y'all check this out. Honey, this woman. No shame. I'm working with Tony Rivera on more global issues. I don't do subtweets. I don't do messy. It's not your girl. Sorry. <sighs> don't be pulling me into no mess. I don't have the time. Girl, bye. <laughs> but did y'all notice? Who noticed on that on the screen she wrote hashtag stop child trafficking? Did y'all peep the shade in that? And do y'all understand why she wrote it? She, yes, Brie from NYC. She's being super messy. Did y'all peep the shade in that when she wrote stop child trafficking? Damn, we got 14,000 people in here. Shout out to y'all. Hope y'all hit that like button. Um, She wrote it because Will Smith, allegedly his name came up on, you know, Mr. Jeffrey Epstein's flight log. And we're going to leave it at that. We're not going into that. I'm going to go into that further on my podcast. Not about Will and, you know, stuff like that, but about, you know, Jeffrey. But that is why she wrote that. Because they said Will Smith was on Epstein Island, honey, having a good old funky time. So I believe her writing that was a shot because of all that stuff that's going on with Will Smith's name being brought up. So Tisha Campbell is very messy, okay? Very, very, very messy for that one. So that this whole situation has been crazy. I can't believe I've already been on here an hour. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's so much stuff. With this, but I believe wholeheartedly that August Alsina and Jada Pinkett Smith had a sexual relationship. I've been saying that for well over a year, you know, and I believe that because he kept dropping hints, he was blackballed. He lost endorsements and all that stuff. And now people are really questioning her because this interview with the with Angela Yee really blew up to the point where the mainstream blogs, you know, the white blogs are running with it and they're asking Jada about it. So now she's talking about, you know, pulling herself to the red carpet. I mean, to the red table talk. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Oh, yeah. And to all the people who think I got table talk with tea from red table talk, because I see people write that every now and then. Didn't nobody take shit from Jada. If you go to my blog talk radio, I have been I've been podcasting since 2008. And my podcast was called Table Talk with Tea. Y'all love to give celebrities credits for everything. Table Talk with Tea. Has been a thing long before I started live streaming on YouTube and long before there was a red tabletop. Thank you. Okay. So this entire situation is a hot mess. Um, can I live send $20? Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Serena Hayes says, Tisha was not being honest, point blank. I saw the hashtag too. Love you, T. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, she was being messy. 
Kevon Jonas sent a, uh, a super sticker. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Um, Hunya says, I want some peen. That's going to make me say I'm going to leave Will too. Hmm. Everybody was shot by them pictures, honey. Everybody. So, you know, like I said, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on the red table tie to see if she brings August on there. Because she's bought him on there before. When she wanted to exploit him and bring him on there to talk about his, you know, um, you know, everything he was going through with his drug abuse, she had no problem bringing him on there. So I think she should bring him back. I would love to see it. There was something else here I wanted to show real quick. Here goes another thing. Just to solidify the whole issue with her and Will in their marriage, where she was talking about, you know, um, dissolving the fantasies of her marriage. Because so many people put her marriage on a pedestal. But honestly, Will has been linked to a lot of different women. Let me show y'all this real quick. One of the women that for a long time people were um, linking to Will Smith was Eva Mendez. Google Will Smith and Eva Mendez, and we all know they played in Hitch together. But these pictures say a lot. Okay? These kisses say a lot. More kissing. So, rumor has it, and like some of this stuff is from their movies, but like this is like red carpet. Like this is not a movie thing. This is like red carpet. Very strange. I don't kiss my coworkers like that, honey. On the red carpet. Very strange. Okay, so there's always been rumors of Will Smith, you know, if not physically cheating, definitely emotionally cheating, okay? But what ended this is when she got with um, Ryan Goslin, okay? When she started having babies with Ryan Goslin, that broke Will Smith's heart. That, that's, that's some tea for y'all who don't know. This is the other video I want y'all to watch real quick. Deterioration and the dissolving of fantasies. Jada Pinkett Smith isn't holding back when it comes to talking about her marriage with Will Smith. Why don't we have more conversations like this? Like, why aren't we talking in a way in which, um, you know, sharing and offering ourselves in a way that we can help each other grow, help each other have the lives that we want. The actress invited Jane the Virgin star Justin Baldoni and rapper Wale to join her on her Facebook watch series, Red Table Talk, where the discussion turned to love and relationships. Pinkett Smith revealed her view on love has changed after being married to Smith for 21 years. Wait. That was real. That was real. I like her, man. I like her. He likes me, but I love him. <laughs> find right. your perfect woman okay and when you find that woman she's going to be a goddess to you but here's the thing i always feel like <laughs> we fall in love with the goddess or the god within that person and then when we actually meet the human being then we got to learn how to love that one and this is when the reason why it's so important to me to be able to stick it out is because to really get to the true meaning of love, in my opinion, it is unconditional. Mm -hmm. It has to be because we are all too flawed. But the actress said some of her problems with her husband stemmed from her coming into their relationship with a lot of personal issues and that her expectations of him were too high. I grew up in a single parent. OK, so y'all heard that. So like I said, it's just always, you know, what I'm saying most of her red table talk. Is her constantly complaining about her marriage. I mean, you can just tell the woman is tired, but they're holding on to something that maybe they should let go. You know, if it's that tiring and exhausting. You know, like I said, the final straw for me was the whole corona thing. Oh, I'm just getting to know Will after all these years because, you know, we're stuck in the house together because of corona. And it's just, you know, just, it was just very weird. But um, a lot of people are pointing out in the chat that there's rumors that's been sparking about Will and Lisa, um, Lisa Cozy. What's her name? Koshay? I forget how you pronounce her name. 
She does a lot of stuff for Will Smith on YouTube. Liza, I think her name is Liza. Liza Koshe. People have been saying that, you know, her and Will possibly have a thing going on. You know, um, the other girl that Will is with is Heidi uh, DeRosa. So, I mean, I don't understand why she's so mad at August when, for the most part, most people know the tea that's going on between her and Will Smith. And it's not that nobody's judging them. Most people in Hollywood have, you know, side pieces and side guys and everything else. And then, you know, it just really makes you question relationships. Let me read this super chat real quick. Um, Sarah May, 225 cents, $50. She says, what's done in secret always comes to light. Amen. It does. It does. Um, Kevon Jonas says, Team August Alcina Nation, y'all go buy and stream the product, product 3 State of Emergency and buy merch, LOL. I'm watching on my laptop iPhone and tablet. Love from Maryland. Can't wait to see you once this is over. Thank you so much. Yes, we are August Alcina Nation over here. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, so this is my thing. You can't rechange what a marriage is, okay? A marriage, you can't just be like, we're married, but then we're gonna go do what we want to do and we're just gonna change it to a life partnership. Put a teacup. Let's let's talk honestly. Put a teacup in the chat if you feel like people are meant to be in monogamous relationships. If you feel like monogamous relationships can really work. Because we all know people who've been married 20, 30 years. But were these people faithful the whole 20, 30 years? Or did, you know, grandpa have a whole family up the damn street? Did grandma have a whole side dude around the corner? So do you feel like that's natural? Okay, I see a lot of teacups. I see a lot of teacups. Because I feel like a lot of people just feel like, you know, and especially in this day and age, that marriage or the conventional, you know, way of thinking a marriage should be is just not natural. And people should be able to have either more than one wife or be polyamorous or, you know, date multiple people. But the only thing that, that scares me with that is when you start bringing people into your bedroom or, you know, having side people, you know what I mean, in your marriage, you know, your husband has a little girlfriend over here, you got a man over there, it creates soul ties. And this is where Jada Pinkett messed up. She picked the wrong person to be bouncing on because, he, you know, th those soul ties were so, you know, connected that August has literally gone crazy <laughs> and he won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm spilling all the damn tea. Fuck you. You don't want to be with me. I'm telling all your business. <laughs> now, y'all might say that's some whole shit, but that's how strong those soul ties were. And that's probably how good the peen was. She was telling August all types of damn shit, whispering all types of shit in his ear. And he was believing it. I'm just saying. Somebody said, well, don't get married. Very simple. I agree. I agree. If you're not ready... To be in a monogamous relationship, then you have no business saying I do or being in a relationship. If you want to, you know, be with multiple people and sleep with multiple people, that's fine. Everybody's grown. You know, there, there were no children, you know, hurting the making of this video. So, you know, do you. But I think people need to be honest. I think they need to be honest. Let me read these super chats here. Carla Jacqueline says, I love watching you, T. Thank you for keeping me up to date. You are more than welcome. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for coming through. Um, v Tamar says, looking beautiful, T. I don't know why Will and Jada just won't come out with the truth. It's 2020. No one cares. Exactly. I think they both checked out of the marriage a long time ago, but they're holding on for either the kids or Hollywood or just this, you know, weird persona, you know, that they've done put out there to the world. I think that's what's really holding them together. But as far as like, I mean, they just, they don't really just look genuinely happy. You know, every time Will Smith is on the red table talk, it's like a chore. Like he's just doing her a favor. Because when I see him with the girl, that, that, that Lisa Koshe girl on YouTube, he seems so relaxed and fun. Like he's in his best element. So, I mean, you can just tell the vibe is different when he's around his wife versus everybody else. I'm Natasha Staples. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. 
Um, let's see here. Shodina Johnson says, T, this is why I don't do relationship goals. I'm not going to I'm not going to goal a relationship I know nothing about. Everyone should just strive to make their own relationship work instead of looking up to others. And I agree. And you know what's so funny? Speaking of relationship goals, when I was probably like in 10th grade, I had a picture. It was from Jet Magazine of Will and Jada. And I remember in my bedroom on that picture, I wrote the perfect couple. And I wanted that. Even as like a, a 14, 15 year old girl, I wanted what I perceived was the perfect couple in Will and Jada. That was before the word couple girl. There was no couple goals back then. We just said perfect couple. You know, so that's what I perceived the perfect couple to be. But as I got older, I realized you never know what's going on behind closed doors. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship, a perfect couple, a perfect friendship. You don't know what people have to endure. You don't know what certain people put up with. You know, you might see somebody's relationship and think it's perfect because let's say the man has money. He's a doctor. They live in this big house. and But then that same doctor, even though the wife is taken care of and she's a housewife, he may have to work upwards of 80 hours a week and they barely ever get to see each other, you know, or I was, ta I was talking to one of my friends the other day and we were just talking about, you know, relationships in general and how hard it can be and how so many people, especially if they're married, they'll compare themselves to other marriages. And you ever been around in a situation where let's say it's you and your boyfriend and then you have this couple over here, you got this couple over here, you got this couple over here. And there's always that one couple that's so extra. They're kissing, they're rubbing up on each other. They're just super, super lovey-dovey and funny, everybody. We're not hating, but I always feel like people who put on the extra sauce and put on the extra show, they're just doing it for attention. Like, if all these people weren't here, y'all would literally be on your couch watching TV. He's on one side of the couch, she's on the other. Have y'all ever seen couples like that? Like, as soon as, you know what I'm saying, as soon as it's a barbecue, they're sitting on each other's laps and tongue kissing. It's like, can you just pass the damn barbecue sauce and hand me a cold bottle of water? You know what I mean? Right, it's annoying. Like, like they're trying to act like they're newlyweds, but they've been together 15 years. Stop. You know what I mean? So you have people like that. And like I said, they might put on that facade for everybody else, but you don't know. As soon as they get in the car, they might be busting each other in the damn forehead with the damn hot plate. You know, so you just, you never know. And whereas the, the couple that's not doing all that and they're just chilling, they might be the most affectionate couple behind closed doors. So you just, you just never know anybody's situation. So thank you for bringing that up. That's a really, really good point. Uh, let's see here. Mia Blackshear says they need to let go. It looks like dead ends. I agree. Thank you for the super chat. Um, so Kenya Sex says my family is Muslim. However, my parents have always agreed that polygamy is not something that they wanted in their marriage, and I respect them for that. By the way, it's pronounced Sukaina. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat as well. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, you know, everything is not for everybody. Some people can deal with, you know, extra activities, and, you know, we'll just be life partners. You do you. I do me, but then we come together and, you know, we maintain the bills. We take care of the family. We take care of the kids. You have to be in a situation that works for you. If you don't want to share your, if you don't want to share your husband or wife, that's fine as well. You know what I'm saying? That you be in a monogamous relationship, but everybody has to do what works for them. But don't get into a situation where you're, where you pledge to be in the, where you pledge to be monogamous and, you know, you, you pledge to be with that person until death do you part. And then within six months, you're cheating. What was the point of getting married? So I think people need to have honest dialogues with themselves before entering into relationships and seeing if that's something they really want. Because marriage is a long-term commitment. Marriage is not having a side chick or a side dude on the side. That's not what the definition of marriage is. And I don't care how bad Jada and Will want to redefine that. That's not the traditional definition of marriage. And that's just facts. How long have I been on here? Okay, so I've been on here an hour and eight minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to log off here. I don't want to make this stream too long. Let's see here. Let me read these last few chats. Um, 
CO says, I feel like Jada prayed on August. We all know how broken August was. I'm sorry, but if a 45-year-old woman was trying to smash my young son, I'm on her behind. I feel you on that one. I mean, when they got together, I think he was like maybe 23. Because I know when he went on the red table tie, she kept, you know, talking about how he was 25 and, you know, he was clean and sober. But she had been mentoring him for at least three years up until that point. So she got one when he was really, really young. And I think that's part of the issue is that he feels like he was used. Like he was basically used as a, as a boy toy, you know, and then just kind of discarded when she was done or didn't need him anymore. And I think that's where the, the hurt and the animosity come from. Um, Lynn Kingdom says, hey, lovely, I, I just uh, want to say I adore you. You have a moderator by the name of Tracy dragging children online. Honey, take that shit to Tracy's page. I already told you I don't bring up people's names. They have nothing to do with this stream. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat, too. Um, Meredith Spring says, love you, T. Greetings from Las Vegas. I'm riding my bike and listening to you today, enjoying every moment of it. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Thank you for coming through, and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um... C. Jarvis 88 says, five, she relieved her love for Tupac through August and added Tupac in his documentary to get her attention once again. I haven't watched his documentary, but I heard it's really good. So I'm going to try and check it out. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's another subliminal sign that he did to get her attention. So thank you for the super chat. Um... Jay Williams says, do you think Will and Jada are bisexual? Jada comes across as Dom. I've heard rumors, but again, it, it doesn't matter to me what they are, what they do behind closed doors. They're grown, but I've heard rumors about both of them, and I'll just leave it at that. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Tyrell Frazier says, this is why I like you, T. 100, because you speak real truth, love from South Carolina. Thank you so much. I love the Carolinas. I can't wait to get back down there and go see my friends, honey. Uh, Melanin Queen says, could you please pass the barbecue sauce and a bottle of water? <laughs> What's up, sis? Thanks for the super chat. You know, I just say whatever the hell comes to the top of my head, honey. But no, it's the truth. I just can't stand people like, who try to be overly affectionate. You know, like, you know, kissing and stuff. But their eyes are going every which way to see who's watching them. Like, okay, calm down. We see y'all kissing. You know, uh, Ray's, thank you for the super chat, sis. Ray's ghost says, I've been, I've never been in a relationship. I'm 24 and I'm still not ready. It feels like too much work. I may be 60 having my first relationship, LOL. I want to love myself before loving others. Love you. I love you too. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. So many times we put pressure on people that they have to be in a relationship. A relationship is what, is what makes you. You know, women need to be married by a certain age. Men need to settle down by a certain age. But relationships don't make you, nor do they break you. You know what I'm saying? You need to figure out who you are first. You know, like, I hate when I see people go through, like, uh, let's say, like, you're in a relationship for, like, three to four years, and then they break up with somebody. And literally within two to three months, they have a new person. It's like, did you even heal from three to four years of that person's spirit and essence? Like, you have to give yourself time to heal and, you know, give yourself a break. So that way you're not going into the next relationship with all this baggage and all this animosity and all this drama. But because we've been so conditioned that, you know, especially as women, you got to have a man. That that's where you have women jumping from man to man to man, trying to keep somebody, trying to keep themselves in a relationship. So kudos to you for understanding that you're just not ready. And until you can love yourself, how can you then turn around and give that love to somebody else? A lot of people aren't even mature enough to think like that. So that's really dope that you're, you know, that you've grown to that level of maturity because relationships are not easy. I remember after my divorce, like, I didn't even date anybody or even talk to anybody for, like, two years, you know. And then when I did finally, you know, start talking to somebody, that probably lasted, like, six months because I still wasn't ready. Then I went another two years without talking or dating to somebody, with, you know, talking or dating anybody. And then I finally got into a relationship, and I was in that relationship for, like, two years. And so it's like... You know, you got to give yourself those breaks. You got to give yourself, you know, mental clarity. 
You can't just jump from one person to another person to another person because it's just mentally draining. Then by the time you turn around, you don't gave yourself to like 10, 15 different people. And for what? They were all a waste of time. So I think, you know, people should talk about that more. So thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Young Kobe says, T, you remember Jada was in Tisha Campbell's wedding? She might have felt some type of way with Jada being in public. Oh, being on a public date. with Hold on, with Jada being in a public with Dwayne on a date. I didn't know Jada went on a date with Dwayne. Dwayne Martin? You're going to have to spill some more tea on that. I didn't know about that. I, maybe they were hanging out because I know they're very close friends. Because I remember when I used to go to the Zen Lounge before, you know, it shut down. And that was a lounge in um, Studio City that was owned by Tisha Martin and Dwayne Martin. I've met both of them. Both very, very nice people. But I remember even watching them at the Zen Lounge. They were like two ships in the night. It's like you could just tell. I don't know because they, cause they were together for so long. But I really didn't feel no type of connection with their relationship at all when I would see them. But if you got them apart... They were more in their element apart from each other than together. But I remember um, Trey was up there, Will Smith's oldest son. He was up there one night. So, I mean, their family's very close. The family's extremely close. So, I don't know. Maybe she's mad because maybe the Smiths sided with Dwayne. I don't know. So, but thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Rapcast says, Will Smith, Independence Day, 4th of July, alien invasion. Hmm. I'm just ready for that red table talk. I wonder if it will air in August, like I said on Instagram. That's going to be very interesting. Um, but thank you for the super chat. Jeanette Thomas says, love your content. Thank you so much, Janetta. Sorry, I mispronounced it. I appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Max Proud says, would you advise anyone not to go for a Hollywood career? Um, no. You know, let me... Let me say this. There's a lot of good people in Hollywood. There's a lot of good people in the industry. I, I lived in L.A. for years. And I'd be lying if I said, oh, everybody in L.A. is evil or everybody in L.A. is wicked or they're all Illuminati. That's not true. You will meet some of the best people working on production, working on set. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes when you work on set for, like, long periods of time, like, there were certain shows that I was always booked for, like the Soul Man show. I know a lot of people used to see me on there doing extra work, but I got really cool with, like, the production, the the cast members, uh, Sinan Lathan's dad, Stan Lathan was the director of the show. Like, you become, like, family almost when you work on certain sets with people, so I'm not going to say that everybody in L.A. is horrible and you shouldn't chase your dream if you want to be an actor or actress. Because for the most part, people in Hollywood or people in L.A. are just regular people. They're just regular people. This, you know, I mean, you have certain parts where you got bougie people and people who got money. You can't tell them anything. But then you could be at Echo Park sitting next to a millionaire and you would never know it. You know, so it's so many different types of people. So I would never want to spin that narrative like, oh, don't go to L.A., don't pursue your dreams because everybody's Illuminati and there's all types of pedo rings. Like, no, there, there's a small fraction of deviant in L.A. There's some deviant people. There's people who hold power and they abuse that power. But hell, that happens in corporate America. I remember at my old job in North Carolina, all the top supervisors was fucking everybody. I said, well, damn, you fucking him too? They got one of the top guys at our job fired and come to find out he was smashing like five different women in the office and they all found out about each other and then they all ran to HR. Half you hoes was married any damn way, so what was y'all doing fucking the supervisor? Now you want to run to HR? Did your husband know you were smashing them? So, I mean, you have people, when they, get, when they have power, they abuse it. So it's not just Hollywood. It happens in corporate. It happens, you know, hell, the, the fried chicken at Bojangles. Somebody done gave him, you know, a little bit of power. You know, went from fried cook to manager. Now he want to sling his beef stick off through the kitchen. <laughs> Who want to suck me off in the parking lot? So, I mean, you just have deviant people. You know what I mean? Absolute power corrupts. 
You know, so it's not everybody in Hollywood. It's not everybody in the industry. There are small people. Once you get to that certain level where you're known globally, that's usually where you where you see a lot of the deviant stuff. But as far as like just the regular people, the showrunners, the regular producers, the makeup artists, hairstylists, the 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 wardrobe stylists, the grips, the gaffers, you know what I'm saying? The the sound techs, a lot of those are probably some of the best people. You know what I'm saying? You you can ever meet. Big hearts, they have all types of tea. Oh, we I used to love being on set. Tell me some tea. And they tell it to you too cuz they see everything. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know, LA is like any other any other city. Hollywood's like any other city. You do have some very deviant people, but it's a small percentage. It's not everybody. So, I hope that answered your question. So, honey, I can't wait to do my podcast. I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight or tomorrow. It's going to depend on how I feel. But I cannot wait to do my podcast. I've been on here for an hour and 20 minutes, y'all. Y'all have been lovely. <clears throat> y'all looked out. Thank you so much, everybody who came through, you know, to support. Thank you for everybody who sent the super chat. I didn't get to read them all. But I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. I'll definitely be back. I'm going to either work on the podcast tonight or tomorrow. But I will be doing a podcast on everything that went down today that I posted on Instagram, okay? I just don't want to talk about it on here because they will, you know, shut down the stream. But I'll post a small snippet on YouTube like I always do. And then everything else will be on my podcast. If you want a full breakdown on my thoughts. And I'm also going to be hitting on Naomi Campbell as well. So stay tuned for that. So on that note, you guys... Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. I'll be back again. I'll talk to you guys later. Enjoy your evening. Have a good night, you guys. Bye.